This is the Full Throttle Podcast, the first ever episode on this podcast. Is as we record, it's Friday, February fifteenth, two thousand nineteen. Hello, everyone. I am Marty Sakala, and I am joined alongside my fellow man of the NOFSRL, Napa fan. What's up, man? Hey, hello. How's it going? Um, I'm looking forward to this. First time I'm ever part of a podcast on a regular basis. <laughs> um, so hopefully this is more successful than the other couple that I've been part of. Um, I definitely have a good feeling about it. It's got some pretty good potential, and we're going to be working hard uh, throughout the year on this. Um, hopefully make a very good and professional podcast for you guys. Take things very seriously. That's what we want to do here. And uh, yeah, we got Speed Weeks right now, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. You got the duels from last night, the clash from Sunday, qualifying from Sunday, bunch of stuff going on from Daytona, and Marty will tell you more. Yeah, so let's start out by talking about the clash. You know, last night, um, it's been like a typical clash we've seen for the past few years. You know, there's always that one race that's caution-free, and then there's that one race that just has like a little... Either, either a minor caution or a major caution. And uh, the big topic uh, of last night's clash, starting off in duel number one, uh, wouldn't really be the finish of the class. Clash, excuse me. Not the clash, the duels, excuse me. But um, Jimmy Johnson, uh, once again, on the hot topic of controversy, as uh, looks like he came up on Kyle Busch as Kyle Busch spun off turn two. Johnson says he knew he made a mistake. Kyle Bush was uh, not happy on the radio, though. So, uh, Napa, give me your take on that. Well, Jimmy Johnson's been spinning a lot of guys out. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with the Chevy body, the way it points out. Um, but, yeah, Jimmy's kind of at, I guess you can almost say, a midlife crisis of his career right <laughs> now. And, and he's just been a little bit more aggressive than normally, in my opinion. Uh, but, you know... Either way, it's not like what happened last night uh, was anything near as bad as what happened on Sunday. But still, y you know, he's been aggressive. I, I don't think this one or what happened last night was as intentional. Um, I don't know. It, it was the only wreck we had all night last night. So, I don't know. Jimmy Johnson's two for two right now. All I'm saying is that he's aggressive. I think he's going to be aggressive in the 500. He's kind of always been that way, and uh, he's kind of at a point where he knows his career isn't going to be lasting too much longer. Uh, so, you know, he's just going to continue doing it, and he's not going to hold back. So, was it too aggressive? Yes. Did he do it on purpose? Absolutely not. And uh, these cars are just so aerosensitive that you can't do things like that without there being consequences. So, I think that's what happened with Jimmy Johnson, but... Hey, you know what? He, he's still a great driver, in my opinion, and uh, he might not be as good as he used to be, but you know he'll he'll be doing some good things this year, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, he spun out Kyle Busch. A lot of people are probably happy about that. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. When I first saw the replay, I I'm gonna and I still think of it right now. I think it was just hard racing because looking at the replay uh, from the turn three uh, camera, looking down the back stretch. Um, I really thought that Kyle may have come down a little and Jimmy came up. So, yeah, I was thinking just a hard racing move. And luckily, though, that wasn't like a major wreck. Unfortunately, it's tough for Kyle Busch. L luckily, he does have to go to a backup car. They still have the primary out for Sunday. And uh, they just had to repair that uh, front tire and some aerodynamic damage. And uh, they could be back in it uh, on Sunday. Yeah, they're going to be starting in the back of the field for the 500, but it's still a really long race. Race start doesn't matter too much, especially if you got a good car like Kyle does. So, yeah, I can understand why he was upset. I mean, you know, it's a qualifying race and he gets spun out. Um, but you got to think, too, where that was. It was off a of turn two. Cars get very loose and very light throughout that area. So I think that's also another reason why it happened where it did. Um I don't know. It's, and that it could just be a coincidence with Jimmy Johnson, you know, coming up. Yeah, and that's sometimes been a thing with the Hendrick cars in the past. If we remember the clash in 2017, Jimmy Johnson's car went out from underneath him off of turn four. The first time uh, he saved it, but uh, in the middle of it, he wrecked Kurt Busch. And then the second time, he took himself out. 
Mm -hmm. And he, you know, he also likes to drive his cars extremely loose as well, so he probably didn't have too much control either time. Um, but either way, like I said, you know, he's kind of at the end of his career here. He knows he is, so I think he's driving really aggressive on top of the fact that, yeah, he's got a really loose race car, he's got a Chevy. There's just so many different little things that pop together for uh, it to be... Um, working out the way it did both times where he spun somebody out trying to make a pass so yeah i mean we'll have to see what happens on sunday i'm looking forward to seeing what happens on sunday um i think jimmy jones is probably going to take somebody out just because or himself out just because of how lucy drives his race car it happens quite often uh but who knows you know that's why we race them but we'll see on sunday one thing, um, the big thing I looked at in the clash, uh, now, why don't you say the clash, the duel in duel one, um, looking at that finish though, um, as we, I looked at it, when I looked at the replay, well, the first time it looked like Stenhouse was trying to get some help from Paul Menard down on the backstretch to try and get a slingshot off of Harvick and try and get the win, but Menard, uh, pretty much just helped Harvick win. Yeah. I mean, you had Stenhouse peek out for like a short period of time, and then he just pulled right back to the outside, and then Menard tried to make a move, but he was from third, he had no help. You see Bubba Wallace, he ended up, like, yeah. making a lot of ground, but then well, lost it. Kind of though. Yeah, he yeah. ended up fourth. Yeah. I mean, the race for second on back was really good. They obviously have the capability of racing good. It's not the cars. I think it's more so the drivers than the cars, why we've seen just you know, average Joe racing, I mean, if you really want to call it that, as of late, uh, I think a lot of it has to do with the drivers just, you know, not wanting to risk it. I, I think a lot of it is cost is so much of a high topic now, such a high concern, the cost of, you know, running the race team. They don't want to wreck all these race cars and have this big issue where, you know, they, they have to find extra sponsorship and all that. They want to race it safe. And, and to be fair, not many drivers like this style of racing. Not many drivers like restrictor plate racing. So, you know, they're just going to keep it safe when they need to. And, you know, I don't think it's the driver's responsibility to, you know, risk, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars just so a few fans can be happy about, you know, them exactly. having a good race. But, but still, you know, I, I was, you know, still happy that they were able to make moves at the end of that race. You know, that's a good sign. And even the second duel as well. They obviously have the capability of doing so, and I'm glad that they do. They're not going to do that all 200 laps at Daytona. This isn't the 2011 Daytona 500. That was the greatest thing ever. But, uh, you, you know, they don't need to, and, and I don't want to see, you know, a bunch of cars get wrecked just because they're trying to make moves. You know, that's not what I want to see. So that's – well, I'm glad we saw very clean racing. I'm glad it just was the way it was. I mean – if it is a you know single file train like that, for one thing, it sounds really good when they crank it up, and secondly, it's always you know nice and clean, and nobody gets you know wrecked out, and there isn't a bunch of extra bills. I mean, we we saw what happened in the clash. You don't want to see that in the dual races. You don't have all those guys go to a backup car for the 500. That's just no fun for anybody. So, yeah, I'm glad it worked out the way it did. But they obviously have the capability of making moves, as we saw at the end of last night. And that's one thing I actually want to talk about right now because I did not like at all the fans' responses to the duels and even the clash. I gotta, on... be, I gotta be fair with you. I don't like the fans' responses to pretty much anything anymore. Yeah, uh... <laughs> indeed. Yeah. Because um, pretty much a typical, you know, an average Joe NASCAR fan, um, not trying to call anyone out here by any reason, would want a few things to happen. One, get, getting the playoffs rid of. Two, um, probably getting rid of the tapered spacers. Three, getting Winston back as a sponsor or something like that. They liked the old, the good old NASCAR days pretty yeah, well. You're not going to get Winston back. I, I completely yeah, no way. You I, can't. I, I mean, I agree no, with like, getting rid of well, the playoffs. I 100% agree with that. I never liked them. Um, you know, they're a little bit better now than what they used to be, but it's still, it's just, it's just it takes so much out of the regular season. It actually only makes a few races mean something versus every single one of them. So, you know, I can see why people, you want to get rid of that. That's a fair argument. Uh, but, but like, you, you're not yeah. going to get Winston back as a sponsor, you know. that That's impossible because, you know, in this day and age with everyone so health conscious, you're not going to have, you know, a cigarette company be the sponsor of a major series like that. That would definitely get a lot of negative attention uh, these days. Um, unlike it did back in the day, things were a little bit different back then, so... But still, you're right. You know, a lot of people 
want things to be the way they used to be. Unfortunately, you can't always have that. I think the safety initiatives are a big reason why things are so different. And you got to be honest, that's a good thing. So, you know. But yeah, I want to go back. I want to go back to that. Um, go back to what I was talking about the fans. I saw so many fans say on social, this Daytona 500 is going to be a snooze fest with all the single file racing. Like, I think I even saw David Land, and I'm not, and not, not a personal shout out him. I got a lot of respect for David Land. Saw one of his tweets that say, Tune in on Sunday to the Great American Race. We all have single fire racing for 199 laps, and then everyone makes the move in the last lap. Well, first of all, we haven't seen any stage racing yet. Um, yes, so that's, that's the first. I, thing. I mean, people do race for those stages. I mean, yes. that definitely will affect it. I, I mean, I don't think we're going to see some single file racing in the Daytona 500. We saw we single will. file racing last year in the Daytona 500. Ryan Blaney led over half of that race. Ah, I actually completely forgot about, about that until they showed it up uh, about a week ago. But, like, you know, you're not going to want them to race heavily for 200 straight laps because yeah. there's not going to be anybody left. I, I mean, the past two Daytona 500s, I, I've kind of hated in a way because so many cars have gotten knocked out. I don't want to see that again. So if they are going to go single file, I, there's a good reason for it. And, and this this is something I, I came up in my mind, and, you know, all these fans complaining, you, you know, the team should send the fans the bills after the, the races. <laughs> um, you know, when they wreck everybody out trying to race hard, you know. that People do not get that one at all. I mean, there is a major cost problem in NASCAR, and the teams aren't as aggressive as they used to be because the costs are just so much higher than they used to be. And there isn't as much money to fund a high cost team. Um, so, you know, they're racing single file for a reason. This style of racing is just not the, the greatest uh, with the Gen 6 car. It's not, you know, the greatest for this era of NASCAR for that specific reason. But, you know, hey, I, I don't think we're going to see a bad Daytona 500. I don't. I think I of think the three races. Race, I think of the three races we're going to see this weekend, it's probably going to be the worst, but it's still going to be good. Um,. And that's going to be like a, a, you know, a classic Daytona 500, I think, you know. We're not going to see much passing for the lead, but, you know, a lot of people will be mixing it up up there, and uh, it'll be fun, in my opinion. And to prove you that the Daytona 500 could have good racing, the final lap, the, the entire dual race was held under the lights, uh, especially because I'm, I'm talking about dual two now. Well, my goodness, last night, Joey so Logano. <laughs> Joey Logano, what a move he made to win. That was insane. Uh, teamwork helped out with Ryan Blaney. My goodness, from fourth to first in two turns. Yeah, he uh, he did a really good job. Um, and that was definitely a good sign, I think, for the 500. Because, like I said, he obviously can race those cars. I think they're just holding back themselves. And the, the Daytona 500 is not a race where I think people tend to hold back near as much as they do and say the duels no, nobody cares about the duels anymore i mean the same goes for the clash unfortunately they just don't mean anything like they used to but of course the daytona 500 yeah it means something and everyone's gonna want to lead in the daytona 500 at some point even that in of itself is a big idea but like they're not going to be you know waiting until the final lap of the 500 to make a move i don't think i think they're going to be trying to make their move when they can because they know that they might not have another opportunity to do so so I think the Daytona 500 is going to be a lot better than what we've seen from the Clash and the Duels. It's just going to be an average race. I don't think it's going to be too crazy, um, but I don't think it's going to be too boring either. I think it's going to be a good mixture this year, and uh, I'm hoping that I'm right. I want to um, go to. I want to talk about the Clash now because um, now I. What'd you, first off, what do you think of the Clash overall? What was your biggest takeaway? I mean, it was. I didn't. The rain. The rain completely. Yeah, it takes away from anything you could say about it, in my opinion, because it, that's the thing I remember the most about. Uh, it was rain shortened, so you can't really judge it. But it it was getting just before Johnson made the move. It was starting to get pretty good. You saw those guys on the inside back in there starting to form up, and I think if we had a few more laps, we would have eventually gotten a couple lines and some good racing. They knew the rain was coming, and they were gonna probably race it out. Uh, but like I said, it's just like the dual races. Why are you gonna risk, you know, wrecking your car, and and going making all these really crazy moves, when you know, for one thing, you don't want to be in this race to start off because it's just 
an exhibition of race, and if you wreck your car, you're going to lose a lot more money than what you would have gotten if you won the thing. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure, though, if I'm correct, that these are completely different cars uh, compared to the Daytona 500 cars they actually run. Because I, I know they have different libraries. Like you look at Jamie McMurray, he's got like Advent Health on on his on his car for the Clash, but now for the 500, he's got McDonald's. Yeah, they do run different cars, but still, the cars cost three hundred thousand dollars a piece. Yeah. So it doesn't it doesn't matter what the setup is. I mean, that that's the point I'm getting at is that they're expensive no matter what. They don't want to be wrecking that thing because if they do, well, they're out three hundred thousand dollars and it's two hundred thousand dollars to win. See, I think that was a big another big reason why people weren't racing. Now, now Daytona 500 is a completely different story. You want to win the Daytona 500. You know, people are going to remember you for that. People aren't going to remember if you won the Clash or not. You ask anybody out on the street, and they and they ask, and they, you know, you tell them, you know, well, you're going to watch the Clash on Sundays, like the what? But if you tell them, oh, you're going to watch the Daytona 500, they're going to know most likely what you're talking about. So, I think the 500 is going to be much different. The Clash, it was okay. I, I my expectations for it are so low because it's just. You know, it, it doesn't mean anything. It's not as fun as it used to be. 2012 Bud Shootout, I mean, that was the race that got me into NASCAR. It was a great race. But it hasn't lived up to that hype ever since, in my opinion. And, you know, it, you know moving that, it to the yeah. wasn't the greatest idea. I mean, I get why they did it, but it actually hasn't really helped out that much. And, uh, yeah, it, I don't know. It was okay. I, I mean, I thought <laughs> right before Johnson made the move, it was getting pretty good. But uh, other than that, it was... You know, it was just a train all the way around the, the racetrack. I know you said the first race you watched was in 2012, but this is actually a fun fact. So the Clash um, does those random draws to determine the starting lineups. When the when the race was tired, the Bud Shootout, there was actually a, a special show that uh, Speed broadcasted where the drivers would come and sit, sit, sit at a bar drinking Budweiser's and... Uh, pick their spots for the race. It was fun to watch. Yeah, Imagine if we had that today with the Clash. Yeah, I mean, they'd all be in an advanced auto parts drinking oil or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, the fun of that race is just gone now. I mean, yeah. like you said, they used to be all at a bar, you know, just having a good time, picking the, picking where they were going to start. And now it's just like, oh, we had to do this, you know. That That's, I think, really what it feels like for a lot of drivers because it used to be a fun race and then it just lost its... I mean, I still, I still like to watch The Clash, but the thing is The Clash has just gotten so much controversy over the past few years like leading up to my ne uh the next topic uh more on it later though but uh nascar is even thinking about having a race a week before the daytona 500 to kick off the season yeah. like you did yeah, back will, in the 70s i would like to Earth clarify side. with everyone they're not moving the time of the daytona 500 at all i i that's another thing about the fans they don't even think uh but you know, I, I get it. I think it's it's almost a good idea. Like, say, you know, you have some West Coast race in the January or something like that, and, you know, it gets the prestige of being the first race of the season, and you have the Daytona 500, because, you know, you, know, you ask an average Joe person, they still know what the Daytona 500 is, you know. They're not going to be like, oh, you know, what is this, you know. You might not watch it, but they're going to know what it is, so... It's always going to have the prestige. I mean, Indy 500, it's always been, what, fifth, sixth race of the season for IndyCar past, you know, few years. I mean, it's not a bad idea. Um, you know, it definitely helps dilute, you know, the whole season out a little bit. I mean, you know, NASCAR is at a point where they need to figure some things out. And I don't think it's a bad idea, but they're not going to be moving the Daytona 500 from President's Day weekend. I mean, it's, that's, you can't do that. It's like, it's just logistically not possible. I'm, I am not really a big fan of them uh, moving up, moving, uh, trying to uh, replace the Clash with the first race of the season. Uh, let me explain why. Um, first off, I know it sounds like a fallacy or something like that, um, but it's a tradition to have a Clash. It's like a little fun season opening kickoff to the race. No points on the line, just all good fun. Uh, and also, this is actually a good opportunity for some of the teams to test out their super speedway package for the four points races that are coming up. You know, they got two chance, you know, some teams will have two chances to test out their plates um, in, a, in an actual race with the, with the clash and in the duels. I don't think it's, I, I mean, I would love 
Uh, I mean, I'm not. I'm okay with whatever NASCAR does, but I don't think they should get rid of the Clash. Yeah, I mean, I, I get it. You know, it's a tradition, but you know, it, it's not. I don't know. It's hard to explain because it, I think here's the thing: the Clash used to be 20 laps. It's now 75 laps. It doesn't need to be 75 laps. It needs to be 20 laps again, or something like that. I think that's the problem. Um, you know, if it were a 20 lap race, I think there'd be more of an incentive to race hard the entire race. Um, and, uh, there, there would just be less of a chance of there being a bigger wreck because there's, you know, only 20 laps in the race. So I think that would be the smart idea is to, you know, make it a real short race again. I mean, 75 laps, just it just drags on. I mean, you know, they're not going to be racing till the end because, you know, why should they? That That's the whole thing. If it's only 20 laps, they're going to be racing the entire time. That's what they should do. Um, but you're right. I mean, it's, you know, always been that traditional opening race. You know, for the past 40 years it has been at least. And it's kind of fun to have kind of like a preseason NASCAR. We don't have preseason like the NFL. So, you know, you're going to have that one race at the beginning of the season. That doesn't mean anything, but it's still kind of fun. And, I mean, if anything, I, I like to see it back at night. You know, I know they want to get people to come out for Daytona 500 qualifying. It doesn't work uh, anyway the way it is, so they honestly should just move it back tonight, I think. But uh, I, I'd like to see that. That could be a possibility in the future, but it should be short in the 20 laps if it's going to be a problem. Um, what was um, – do you think that the Jimmy Johnson move, though, on Paul Menard uh, was just hard racing? I feel like it was, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, you it, know, was. it was. It was a yeah. hard side draft, and – they're so aerosensitive. They just came together because of the air. I think he, like I said, he's kind of in a midlife crisis of his career right now. He's just driving aggressively. I mean, he didn't intentionally spin him around. I mean, that's that's stupid to do at a place like Daytona. And he's smart enough to know not to do something like that. But he, he I mean, you know, we saw Daniel Suarez in that race. You know, make that move where he got out of the quarter panel and then drove away and tried to on his own ride. But um, it. it it just didn't work out for him. Well, it did work out for him. Actually, he won the race, but uh, it didn't work out for everybody else. So uh, it was just aggressive driving, you know. And, and at a like, place like Daytona, aggressive driving isn't the best place to do it. Like, it is a, it is, it is a bummer that 16 drivers were involved. Well, I shouldn't say 17 drivers, but four left, uh, got by the scene um, easily. And uh, it's just a heartbreak, but yeah, it's just hard racing. You know, the rain was starting to come. Jimmy Johnson had to make that move if he was going to win the clash. If he did not make that move, the race was over. Paul Menard, although it's a heartbreak that he lost that race, uh, would have won the race had Jimmy not made that. But yeah, he just had to go for it, pretty much. Mm -hmm. He did, and he did. And you know, and he's kind of the guy who doesn't care anymore. He's kind of like that, you know, that old man, you know. Doesn't care. I don't know. That's a real bad analogy. But, but still, you get the point. He's at a point in his career where he doesn't need to care that much. So, you know, he kind of can just do what he wants. So, yeah, he didn't do it on purpose, but he was definitely rather aggressive in that race. Yeah. Um, let's, let's talk about the uh, Daytona 500 qualifying because uh, that guy, that was really good. Um my goodness, those Hendrick cars are always fast and during plate qualifying sessions. Yeah, they uh, swept the top four positions. <laughs> um, they obviously, you know, put a lot of time and effort into doing that. Um, but uh, are they going to win the 500? I don't think so. They're quite spread out for the uh, starting line. Of course, they got the front row, but, you know, Johnson and Elliott, they're sharing room nine so uh didn't work out for them in the duels but yeah you know they definitely are a good team um they're not as good as they used to be but they obviously still have it when it comes to super speedway qualifying and um yeah i mean i'm not surprised at all you know a little surprised it was they, they, it was william byron who won it yeah that was same a little surprising but i'm not like 100 percent surprised because they're, they're just gonna be throwing the whole the, the whole what is it what do they throw what is the analogy uh <laughs> they throw the whole kitchen sink at it that's what they did and they do that every year and uh it's no surprise that they lock the front row yeah and and plus you know byron's got an amazing crew chief in chad canals he is if not one of the greatest crew chiefs of the sport mm -hmm. absolutely uh, but 
Yeah. Uh, they kept on but, talking. Uh, with a new guy. They kept on talking yeah. about, you know, how Jimmy Johnson and, and uh, William Byron, I mean, whenever they would be close to each other, it would be like, oh, you know, that looks weird, looks weird. It's like, yeah, of course it does. I mean, yeah, I get it. You know, Chad Canals is now with William Byron. Jimmy Johnson's, you know, on his own now with Kevin Mendering and all that. But you don't need to mention it every single time. We get it. You know, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't really see Byron winning a race this year, to be honest, even even though he has Chad Canals. I don't see it. Jimmy, Jimmy Johnson might get a win, but it's not anything real special. I, I, I think I, I don't think it's going to work out too well, personally. Uh, After we have the but... first two races of the season at Atlanta and Las Vegas, get back to me on that, uh, then I'll let you know. <laughs> all right, all right. We'll, we'll have to see how that all goes. Because down. as we all know, the bread and butter of the, se- the season is, is those one-and-a-half-mile tracks, and it'll be interesting to see what happens, especially with the new Arrow. Mm-hmm. That'll, that'll be interesting. But anyway... um. Talk about um, some other things. Uh, you actually had a 60-second video on it last um, about half a month ago. Yeah. But the Rolex 24, though, um, wow. Just that's nothing to say except wow. Um, probably one of the most dramatic ones, especially with the the weather that ha- that took place. Um, but Fernando Alonso is – I he's – Definitely one of the greatest drivers of the sport of auto racing in this era. Mm-hmm. No question about it. Um, you know, he's really good. Of course, he was with a real good team, too. I mean, uh, Wayne Taylor Racing is one of the strongest teams in IMSA, so they're not going to, you know, be a slow team. So, you know, I'm not surprised at all by him winning. Um, I don't really like the way it all played out. I don't like the fact that the rain kind of yeah. you know, ended the race early and you know, the fact that they were out there in the rain uh, caused uh, the Whelan Engineering Racing car to, to uh, spin out with Philippe well, Nasser even... there. That, they, I, they didn't need to be racing at that point, I don't think. Uh, you, you know, you can say what you want about them, you know, just letting them win, but you know, it, it's, it's the way it is. You know, I think he the big the last big step for Fernando Alonso is the Indy 500. He he's I don't know if he's gonna win it, but the way he won Le Mans and Daytona the past couple of days or past couple of weeks or past couple of months, yeah, <laughs> you, you know what I mean. The way he won those races, um, you know, it, it shows that he just really is still in his prime. Um, so, you, you know, any 500 is a completely different animal, but I wouldn't be surprised if he won that either. Um, so it's just I did not I'm like... Not, um, I'm not surprised by anything he does at this point, just because, you know, he won Le Mans easily. He yeah. won Daytona easily this year. You know, he he could win the Indy 500, but like I said, it's a completely different animal. Yeah. I'm not... I am... Um... I'm not happy with the way Emza called the race because 10 minutes to go and they call the race. That race was that race was over even before 10 minutes to go. With like 30 minutes to go, that race was over. I did not like that they were racing in, in torrential rain conditions that badly. Um, similar to this was the first NASCAR ever raced in the rain, which was uh, the nation, the back then Nationwide Series at Montreal in 2008 um, with all of the um, hazardous rain. NASCAR had called it and gave Ron Fellows the win. Um, they should have called it with like 30, 45 minutes to go and just give fellow, uh, give Alonso the win there pretty much. Yeah, I mean, they could have definitely managed it a lot better. I honestly personally don't think they should have even started in the rain to begin with uh, a few hours before because I don't think it was really any different. Um, they tried to get the race in. Of course, you know, it's a Rolex 24. You want to end the thing under green. And, you know, obviously we knew by, you know, half hour before they weren't going to get back out there. But, uh, you know, they, they just wanted them to wait and make sure that they had the, you know, standings official and everything. There's a lot of things that go on behind there. So I, I don't I don't know the logistics behind it, so I can't really give my opinion on, you know, you know, they should have done this, should have done that. But there's a lot more behind, you know, announcing that decision that I can comprehend for me to understand, oh, yeah, well, they could have done this, could have done that. But, you know, hey, it is what it is, you know. 
Alonzo wins it. You know, a lot of people are happy about that. You know, to be fair, I don't like the way they won. Um, the same thing happened with Jeff Gordon when he won it. You know, they they got into uh, the um, Action Express car um, in that race. And, and it was a close call. You know, it could go. It could have gone either way, but they still won by spinning somebody. They didn't do anything wrong in this race, but I kind of feel like the conditions they were in uh, while they were racing compared to when they threw the, the last red flag weren't really any different. Uh, they just kind of threw out the red flag when Alonzo had the lead. So, you know, I did not like the way it ended because of that. But, you know, it is what it is. Congratulations to Alonzo. You know, he's got another, you know, crown jewel there. And uh, I, I would love to see him win Indy because... Uh, now, that'll be cool, but that's a, that's the hardest one. That's the biggest one right there. So yes. we'll have to see what he does in May. Definitely. Um, also, uh, not really surprising to say, but about six to seven hours into that race, the Mazdas, who are very fast in that qualifying session, both had problems within five minutes. Yeah, they, uh, they definitely have reliability span. issues. That's That's the biggest thing for them. They actually were the strongest cars there uh, up until that problem occurred, um, but uh, it didn't work out for them. They uh, mm -hmm. they lost two race cars, like you said, within 15 minutes. There, it wasn't wasn't def definitely wasn't a good day for them. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Um. Oh, oh yeah, we haven't even talked about Arca yet. Uh, that was. A uh, pretty good race uh, in the final few laps. I I was sick, so you might you might be the one that's best to talk about this one. I I don't remember much of it because I was really sick that day. All I know is that Harrison Burton won, Brandon McReynolds, and I forgot who else it was. I I don't think it was Akias, and um, but uh, they were do, they were coming, uh, and then they wrecked, and we had a final lap restart, and mm -hmm. Harrison Burton won. Good for him. That's all I remember. Yeah, he did a good job. He did a good job. He actually led over half of that race, I'm pretty sure. So there wasn't much that went on in that race. There wasn't much passing. Um, but it was still, you know, a good day for Harrison Burton. I think he, he's definitely one of those guys, within a few years, we'll be seeing him, you know, up there, probably possibly in the Cup Series. You know, We're in, a, we're in a, an era of NASCAR where we got so many guys coming up through the, the ranks, you know, and a lot of these guys are coming up all the way. You know, a lot more than ever. So, uh, you know, they're coming up through the right time. And uh, Harrison Burton's one of those guys. You know, he did a great job in the race. Looked like a veteran. Mm -hmm. um, let's move on to our predictions for this week. I feel like we've talked a lot about what's happened in the past. Uh, let's look at the future. So, yeah, as we're let's recording. Talk about the future here. It's going to be fun. Yes. As we're recording, um, tonight uh, we've got the truck race at 7 30 uh, at Daytona. And that is, I'm looking forward to it. It's going uh, to be the best, best race the of the weekend. It's going to be the best race of the weekend. Um, Usually it is. I, I don't, I can't give um, you an idea on like what's going to happen. I mean, you know, the the drivers in that series are pretty much different every year. It, it's hard to bet against Johnny Sauter, though. I mean, yeah, he's, he's like the super speedway um, king of the of the of the. Um, entries. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be driving for Thor Spore, but you know what? I'm gonna go on a limb and say Matt Crafton finally gets that Daytona win tonight. Um, you think Matt Crafton you know, does? Yeah, because you know he's been trying for many, many years. I think he'll finally get the Daytona win tonight. I am gonna. Go, um, I'm gonna go with. Um, this is a tough. I I think I'm gonna go with Todd Gilliland. You know. We've only seen him on a super speedway once, and he was running up in the front, but he got in that wreck with, like, I think it was 12 laps to go um, at Dega. But I'm going to go with Todd Gillen. He's been due up for a win since last year. Um, imagine if he gets his first win at the World Center of Racing, though. Mm -hmm. That would be big. That would be big for him. Um, do you happen to have a long shot, though, that you could that uh, you could see maybe spoiling I wouldn't know if you call him a long shot for this, but it's not really a name you'd expect to be winning a Daytona race. I, or, I mean, he did win Talladega, so maybe not really a long shot, but, you know, Grant Enfinger is not a guy many people are talking about. Um, I, I He's my favorite truck driver, so I kind of have to go. I, I like going with him on this one, but I think he'll he, – he's kind of just – he's been there a long time. He's, at this point, almost a truck series veteran. 
and uh, I don't feel like a lot of people give him the credit that he deserves. So I kind of feel like he is a long shot. Not really a long shot per se, but a dark horse. You know, a guy that could surprise and win tonight. Uh, my long shot is actually going to be a name you would not expect. But through looking at all the uh, times uh, this week from trucks, watch out for Clay Greenfield. Um, he's never really been up in front in the final few laps because he usually gets into that mid-race wreck. But if he misses that mid-race wreck, he could be a big contender in the final laps of this race. You know, he was fastest in the first practice session at 68. A lot of his focus is on the super speedway plate tracks. It could be interesting. Yeah, he could have a very good shot, actually. He led a few laps last year, so it's not a bad pick. Not a bad pick at all. Yeah. Um, let's move to the Xfinity Series race. Um, that's on. Uh, that's tomorrow at 2.30. Um uh, what are you looking for in this race? Hopefully, it's not a wreck fest like the past two years. And, yeah, yeah I, hopefully we're not. I mean, it probably will be. Um, yeah. <laughs> sorry to disappoint you there, but uh, it'll be interesting. We're going to get one of those guys just, just up and coming. Justin Haley's going to get some revenge and get the win. You think, think. You think Haley gets the I revenge? He I was... I, I, he's got a teammate in Ross Chastain. You know, he's really good, but Justin Haley gets it. Um I'd be big for Colleague Racing, you know, it'd be their first ever win. But that, I think I think it's going to be a race of attrition. Haley's going to avoid a lot of it and uh, get the win and not cross below the double yellow line like he did. Unfortunately, he did do it last year. At the, that's, the a, that's a bummer. Summer, but, <laughs> but, yeah, I think Justin Haley's going to win it. it it's going to be a wild race. I think I mean, even tonight's race is going to be wild. I think the first two races is going to be wild. I don't think the 500 is going to be wild, but uh, it'll be a wild race tomorrow, and it's going to be Justin Haley getting the win, in my opinion. All right, man. If only Elliot Sadler was still racing. It'd be the easiest pick to make. <laughs> um, but in my opinion, uh, looking at – I'm going to look at the entry list here while we're waiting here. Uh, look up NASCAR.com. Oh, wow. Um, oh, yeah, qualifying is actually underway for the trucks as we're recording. Mm -hmm. I got it on right above us right now. Nice. Um, I actually do like your pick with uh, Justin Haley. He was the fastest in uh, practice. Yep. He only needed three laps. Wow. A lot of the, the underdogs uh, decided to take some time out there. We didn't see a lot of people on that second practice session, so I'm just going to look at the first practice session where we had more people out there. And we got uh, we have Tyler Raddick racing. Um mm -hmm. That's, that's so, me. I'm probably just going to go with Tyler Reddick once again for the second year in a row, this time in, RC, in an RCR machine. Uh, they've won a Daytona before. Um, they've had a tough – but uh, it's been tough for them the past few years, especially with um, Matt Tifton, too. Mm -hmm. um, you, do you have a long shot? Um, long shot. Ross Chastain is probably a good long shot for it. That's a good um, one. I think those colleague guys are going to do really good because um, they're both, you know, especially Ross Chastain, you know, he's got a lot to prove um, after, you know, losing his ride the way he did. He wants to go out there and win it. And if he does, he'll be in the, you know, playoffs. I think pretty sure that's the series he's declaring for points because he's going to be back at JD um, starting at Phoenix, I think. But, um, yeah, long shots, not really too much of a long shot, I guess, but uh, Dark Horse long shot be uh, Ross Chastain. He, he definitely has a you know huge capability of winning the race. My long shot is actually going to be Jeffrey Earnhardt in the 18. Uh, the Toyotas usually do pretty good at uh, Daytona. but not really around, though, at the finish. But I, this could be a breakout race for Jeffrey Earnhardt, yeah, so watch out. Good. Great opportunity yeah. for him um, at Joe yeah. Racing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, then we, time for the big one. <laughs> yes, the big one. Uh, the Daytona 500. Um on Sunday at 2.30. Oh, man. The Daytona 500 is pretty much pick a name out of a hat. Hopefully it wins. <laughs> you know, I don't think it's going to really be that case. Uh, Ryan yeah. Blaney did really good last year. Um, he's going to lead a lot of laps again and get the victory. Ryan Blaney wins. I'm actually going to agree with you uh, on this. Surprisingly, Ryan Blaney, you know, I, you could call it a one the one that got away uh Winning, almost had the race won, dominated the race, led the most laps. Three, uh, but with three laps to go, he got caught up in that, uh, uh, in that wreck with Kurt Busch, and uh, 
uh, and a bunch of others. Uh, yeah, that's my. I'd, I'd say Ryan Blaney. Watch out, my other two drivers, as I have them on Fantasy Live. Spoiler alert, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I've got Denny Hamlin on my roster, Eric Almarola. Those two are good uh, plate racers. Um, they could be keys uh, to win this race. And then who's your long shot? Uh, the man himself, the burrito. Uh, he did really good in the dual race. He's got a solid you know, number 95, and he's got teammates essentially at this point um, with the Gibbs guys. And you know the Gibbs guys are going to be good, so watch out for him. He, he could be running up front. He could find a way to win. It, it, that's a true long shot, but he could win it. He could definitely win it with, you know, all the resources he has now and, you know, the fact that he did pretty good in the dual race as well, finishing fourth. He'll be starting ninth in the 500. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm going to say that's my long shot as well, Matt Benedetto. You know, uh, it was in third with three laps uh, with uh, four, I think it was out of three or four laps to go. And that, and it was so tough uh, to be having to, to have to cheer for him, especially with Blaney ahead. <laughs> And then realizing that I was in third last year in that race and almost won the won the darn thing, my goodness, mm-hmm. he could be yeah he could he could be a he could be someone to watch out for at Daytona. Um, even Bubba Wallace as well, you know, Daytona was really that was his breakout race, mm-hmm. even though he had a tough was, 2018 was. with that was his the only second race role. he had. I mean, it's his best shot to win every year, in my opinion. He's he's got got something special in the 500, so watch out for him. All righty. Um, uh, before we go, um, one more thing I would like to talk about is the greatest paint scheme this weekend. You're I asking think, the wrong yeah. person. <laughs> I, I think we all know what the best one is this weekend. Scheme. I do not have eyes for a good paint scheme at all. I, I just don't. Uh. I, I, I got to tell you, that Corey LaJoy. Okay, never mind. I do. That wins. Enough said. Let's go. Yeah, that wins. <laughs> That wins. Go fast racing. If you're out there, one of you guys need to needs to put a cruise one of those cruise shirts on because I I'm, I got a feeling Old Spice is not going to sponsor the rest of the season. I'd be unfortunately. Shocked. No, they, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, Old yeah, Spice, uh, please, but um, please put one of those cruise shirts on eBay or just give one out to me, please. Yeah. Okay. Um, because those cruise shirts and even those fire suits for the we picker won't ask guys. For any money, we just want sick. the Old Spice. Like, I'll even buy one off of eBay if I have to. Yeah. You'd be an old spice camp for Halloween. <laughs> yep, that, that, that's what you had to be. Oh. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to this weekend. A truck race is going to be the best, uh, in my opinion. I am really looking forward to that because there's so much of a huge variable in that thing. Uh, it's going to be good. Um, so watch that tonight. Uh, I don't know. When, when are you posting this, Marty? <laughs> Uh, this will probably be up uh, before the uh, truck race, hopefully. Okay, hopefully. As long as your as long as your computer works fine. Well, my computer works fine, so I guess I <laughs> guess I'll upload it then. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the uh, that, that's the first uh, uh, sign it to me as well. But uh, yeah, yeah will. <laughs> that's the first ever episode of Full Throttle with Marty and Nap Fan. Thank you all very much for watching. Next week, uh, I'm not sure when we'll do it. We'll figure it out though. But we'll recap the weekend and we'll preview uh, Atlanta. Atlanta should be a good, should be an interesting weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the new, uh, new, new uh, what you call it, uh, new Aero package. Yes. So it'll be uh, definitely an interesting race at Atlanta, no question about it. But yeah, that's good. But yeah, so yeah, that's gonna do it uh, for Napa. I'm Marty. This has been Full Throttle. We'll see you next week.